you running? Why? Hello and welcome to the Warframe tier list. Today we'll be going over Zaku. First things first, let's go into the build. The build is pretty straightforward. All you want to do is run max range and get 200% strength. How we're reaching 200% strength is Molt Augmented. When fully stacked, gives us 60% ability strength, pushing us to 179. In conjunction with our Focus School of Choice, Moderai, we get a further 40% ability strength after Void Slinging twice in a row. This pushes our ability strength to 219%, well over the 200% threshold to full strip with Gaze. A quick pause here to mention that I am stupid. I found out after I recorded this video that you could simply take off Transient Fortitude and replace it with Umbral Intensify and gain 28% duration at the cost of 11% strength with this main build. And it's basically just free duration as the strength doesn't matter as you'll still have over 200% strength. That being said, there are some alternatives you can do for strength, such as if you don't have Prime Shore footed, running Power Drift instead. Um, this also allows something like regular Shore footed here in conjunction, giving us 90% chance to resist knockdown, or Handspring instead of Shore footed which gives us 30% chance to resist knockdown with a power drift and whenever you do get knocked down, 160% faster recovery. Another alternative, which is obviously the best alternative, but I will not be judging him based on this because I do not believe in it, is Archon Shards. A single red Archon Shard, it doesn't even have to be Tau Forged, puts us over the 200% strength threshold, freeing up this mod slot entirely. You could slot something like Equilibrium for Sustain, or what I would do is Cunning Drift, because Cunning Drift gives us 15% more range, and range is by far the most important stat as long as you are full stripping with the three. So even something as small as 15% range will do a lot. Uh, now, another thing that you can do is as long as you can shield gate with whatever your one is, uh, you can also take Brief Respite off for Corrosive Projection. What this does is it lowers the strength needed to full strip with the 3 from 200% to 162%. Um, so if you can make this work or you, if you think that this is just better, uh, by all means go for it. And this also brings me to my next point which is Zaku's one, Zada's Whisper. Um, Zaku is a prime example of a Warframe that actually functions and has four good abilities. I know that's surprising, as Warframes typically only have one ability, but Zaku actually has four. So either subsume something here, it doesn't have to be Breach Surge, that you can spam for shield gating, or just keep Zada's Whisper. It is a good enough ability to keep. Um, again, just make sure that you're running enough Augur mods and Brief Respite to Shield Gate. As for the rest of the kit, I am running a primary weapon for AoE. Um, again, it doesn't really matter. You are full stripping, so anything will kill. Uh, this Riven doesn't matter. Completely useless. You're overkilling anyway. Uh, run something for QL, such as Prime Fast Hands for reload speed, or Precision Strike, which is the Tom Core specific mod for even more reload speed, or Prime Magazine Warp for two shells instead of one when fully ranked. Uh, the secondary I was using was the New Core. This was entirely used for dealing with Nullifier Bubbles. Uh, the build I was using, I did not need an Augur mod, so I just had a full DPS New Core. But if you need the auger mods, make sure that you use the auger mods. And then now on to the melee weapon. Uh, Zaku does not need a melee weapon. His kit is sufficient enough to deal with everything in, in conjunction with his primary and secondary weapon. So what I would suggest for a melee weapon with Zaku 
is the Enodem or the Prados. The reason why they suggest specifically the Prados or the Enodem is because the Prados on the second evolution, although I do not have it equipped currently, gives 20% sprint speed and the Enodem gives 30% sprint speed. So since your melee isn't necessary anyway, you may as well use the Prados or the Enodem just for free stats. This brings us to the final part of the build, which of course is the companion. And of course we are just using the standard Panzer build with the synth mods equipped. Now let's move on to the ranking portion of the video. We will be discussing Zaku in relation to four separate topics. Firstly, the KPM. Secondly, the survivability. Thirdly, the viability in the different game modes. And finally, how fun they are to play. All of this data is sampled from a one hour solo steel path mod run with no specters and no on call. So onto the first topic, the KPM. And this is pretty short and sweet. Zaku's KPM is super high between the second ability, scaling with the enemy level, and the third ability, full stripping all of the enemies. This means that even at level cap, you will be killing the enemies just as quickly because A, they're armor strips, so your guns will kill them no matter what, and B, your second ability literally scales its damage based on the enemy level. So they're just gonna die. There's really not too much to say here. The first run, I got about 130 KPM, and the second run, I got like 125 or something, but I was using a better weapon loadout. Um, in a ideal scenario, with the better weapon loadout and a better tile set for optimal spawns, you could very easily break like 140 KPM with Zaku. And again, to reiterate, this scales the level cap. That means that Zaku very easily gets an S plus for his KPM. Now moving on to survivability, uh, again, Zaku excels here. Why? Because Zaku is a shield gate frame that has low shields that's already good enough to make it like an a but his high kpm combined with the four passive gives you 75 percent evasion whenever you activate the four and the sheer volume of enemies that you're killing there's just not many enemies shooting you and you have 75 percent evasion what this means is you're pretty much just invincible and you don't have sustain issues because everything's just dying and the few things that are surviving aren't hitting you anyway. There was a few times where I would see that my shield was broken and I just wouldn't even bother shield gating because there just weren't enough enemies. Like I just took the risk and they would and they never killed me. Obviously eventually this would kill you, but the fact that that's even an option to just not even bother trying to shield gate because you're sure that you won't die from from the four passive, like it's just absurd, so I'm going to have to give his survivability an S as well. Now, moving on to the third topic, which is the viability. And again, this is really good. In non-endless missions, it's kind of whatever. Um, there's nothing too spectacular, because you have to build stacks, and it is more of a campy playstyle. So... And just standard non-endless missions, it's just average, it's nothing to write home about. But once you start talking about endless missions, this is where Zaku excels massively. First off, in survival, I believe Zaku is one of the best, one of the absolute best all-around frames in the entire game for survival. Why? Because he has high KPM, insane survivability, and insane scalability with his armor strip and his two. Then there is Disruption, and in Disruption, while not the best, it is still good, especially if you're just the person killing the enemies for the keys. But his three does strip demos, it just isn't too efficient at it. Um, because they don't purge the enemies that you cast your three on, but you would the demo would have to be inside the radius and there would have to be and if it's not there would have to be an enemy near you for you to cast your three on to armor strip the demo so that gets a bit awkward so he's 
he's in an awkward spot for disruption, but he's still definitely good there. And then defense, he's kind of whatever because line of sight doesn't play too well with him, but like he's still AOE armor stripping. So it'll still be a good supplementary player or just solo nuker. Like it would work. It just wouldn't be 10 out of 10. It would just be like seven or eight out of 10. Like it would still be good. So his overall viability, I still have to give an A+. Now, moving on to the final topic, the, of course, subjective topic, how fun Zaku is to play. And this is where I believe that Zaku falls off a bit, as I do not find them that entertaining. The reason I don't find Zaku entertaining is because it's fun for a bit, because you're just running around killing everything with no chance of dying, but after a while, it gets kind of boring. Like, you're not really pressing abilities too much other than to shield gate. Because all of your abilities have such long durations. Your 2 and 3 literally have infinite duration as long as you keep your 4 up. And your 4 lasts like 38 seconds and there's no reason to ever double cast it. So all you're doing is casting your first ability to shield gate every now and then. And running around shooting your guns. It's, there's not really much to it, but it is fun for a while, and it is a very chill, relaxed gameplay. So I will give the fun aspect of Zaku an A-. In conclusion, Zaku is an S- tier Warframe, and could rank even higher depending on who you ask. This is because Zaku has very high KPM, infinite scaling potential, and also good survivability.